Uh, I would uh, now like to welcome the next speaker, my co-moderator, uh, Darius uh, Hildebrand, uh, who will discuss uh, topical beta blockers for infantile hemangioma, a 10-year experience. Um, Darius is a, a dear friend and, uh, and, and colleague from the United Kingdom, and uh, uh, he uh, is also the present uh, president uh, of the uh, European Pediatric Ophthalmology Society, who is uh, co-hosting this uh, webinar. Uh, please, Darius, um, start your presentation. Good afternoon. My name is Darius Hildebrand. I'm going to speak on topical beta blockers for infantile hemangiomas and our experience with it. Infantile hemangiomas play a large role in pediatric ophthalmology. They're the most common pediatric lid and orbital tumors and most common tumors in infancy. Uh, the incidence is 1 in 25 to 50 infants, 64% involve the face and 7% eyelids or orbits. Following a rapid proliferative phase uh, for the first several months up to a year, there's a variable plateau phase followed by slow involutional change at a rate of about 30 to uh, at a rate of about 10% per year. Ophthalmic indications for interventions earlier are development of or risk of amblyopia, mechanical strabismus or proptosis, compressive optic neuropathy, or facial disfigurement. The mainstay treatment until 2008 was corticosteroids, systemic or intralesional, but corticosteroids are frequently associated with um, side effects, some of which are very severe, can be very severe as, as listed here. A change happened in 2008 when um, uh, doc a French team around uh, Dr. Leo Tillabrez uh, made a fortuitous and serendipitous discovery of the therapeutic effect of oral beta blockers in infants with infantile hemangioma who had coincidentally been treated with propanolol for cardiomyopathy. And since then, beta blockers have become first line treatment for infantile hemangiomas. The problem with oral propanolol is that, again, you have systemic uh, administration and therefore systemic side effects, including hypertension, heart failure, bronchospasm, respiratory failure, and metabolic changes. In the largest prospective cohort so far, 906 consecutive French children on propanolol with a median dose of 2.0 uh, milligram per kilogram per day for 190 days and with more than a year of follow-up. 8.8% or 1 in 11 children had adverse reactions. 1 in 38 had serious adverse drug reactions, defined by the authors as any ADR leading to death, life-threatening injury, hospitalization, disability, or permanent damage, or any other important medical events as judged by the investigator. Children on oral propanolol clearly need close monitoring, therefore. There's also concern about these developing infants that there may be long-term risk of systemic beta blockade, which we'll come back in a moment. Because infantile hemangiomas are essentially a cutaneous disorder, a transcutaneous topical application of a beta blocker is inherently attractive an option. So what is the evidence this works? In superficial infantile hemangiomas, we reviewed the literature several years ago, and we noticed that uh, very few side effects are indeed reported with transcutaneous topical administration. There have been multiple studies since, including this large US multicenter retrospective cord study of 731 children that reported a remarkably low rate of bronchospasm, of only 0.4% in these infants, no cardiovascular adverse reactions, and no adverse reaction requiring terminal discontinuation. In 2020, a, a two meta-analyses were published comparing topical versus systemic uh, beta blockers. The first one is 1,235 patients, and it came. It found that uh, topical beta blockers were as effective as oral propanolol in superficial IH, but with few adverse effects. And the authors recommended that topical beta blockers replace oral propanolol as first-line therapy for superficial IH. That same year, a second, even larger meta-analysis was published of 2,098 children. <clears throat> and again, 
the authors found that uh, topical beta blockers were as effective as oral propanolol, but with few adverse effects. And again, the authors recommended topical beta blockers, especially timolol, re to replace oral propanolol as first line treatment for superficial IH. This shows the uh, similar effectiveness of topical versus oral, and this shows the superior safety profile of topical versus oral. So for superficial uh, infantile hemangioma, topical beta blockers are now recommended first line treatment because they're as effective and they're safer. But what about topical timolol for deep periocular infantile hemangioma? Uh, I've been treating uh, hemangiomas with uh, timolol drops for 10 years now. And uh, several years ago, we collected a series of children with deep periocular infantile hemangiomas who had or were about to develop um, amblyopia due to strabismic reasons, mechanical restriction, due to pupil obstructing ptosis, or due to astigmatic or uh, anisometropic reasons. This is one such child, uh, a large hemangioma on the left side covering the left pupil. It has already developed amblyopia. We need to do something. And this is the uh, treatment outcome with drops alone uh, after 10 months, very good cosmesis and with equalized vision now of six or six in each eye. This shows with greater temporal resolution what happened. So it presented on the top left slide here untreated. Uh, they came back a week later, it had clearly progressed. You can see the aggressive blood vessel um, circulation here. And it was occluded in the visual axis. The next slide shows uh, the uh, rapid progression, rapid pr uh, progress uh, following treatment with topical timolol. Uh, after one week, the visual axis is open already, three weeks, five weeks, and nine weeks. There's another child, 18 week old boy with bilateral mechanical ptosis, uh, right pupil obstruction, and this uh, child also had restricted up gaze, couldn't look up very well. Even after two weeks treatment, there was marked improvement. The final outcome was full extraocular movements, no more amblyopia, and normal cosmesis as can be seen in slide C, uh, and no recurrence following cessation of treatment. This shows again the same child with, um, with further short statement at two weeks, showing the um, rapid recovery six weeks and four months. Okay, so what about then topical timolol for orbital infantile hemangioma? Now, this is a six week old baby that presented to me with left severe proptosis. The parents did not want to have systemic uh, beta blocker treatment. And so we tried timolol. And this is the same child three months on timolol, a remarkable outcome. This is after 12 months and then having been off treatment for one year and no recurrence has happened. Uh, this is an excellent uh, cosmetic outcome and an excellent uh, functional outcome. The parents are very pleased. The resolution, the resolution is confirmed radiologically after one year on the series of imaging before and after. And as you can see, the extensive lesion involved in both intracolon and extracolon compartments the, uh, has resolved on on, on the imaging. This is a six uh, week old baby with left proptosis and marked infra displacement before treatment. And this is again, after four months, a remarkable improvement uh, for this degree of pathology. And after 10 months of timorol, very nice, very pleasing outcome physiologically and uh, cosmetically. This is a six, this is the same boy before and after four months in down gaze. This was an 18 week old child with five millimeter proptosis before treatment uh, at the top. And even after nine days, one can see already how the proptosis is regressing because the retraction, the pseudo retraction of the inferior lid uh, on the left side has already given away because the eye is not pushed out so much anymore. I can also see the periorbital swelling and the upper lid, for example, here with fold billing, meaning that the congestion has started to come down. And there's again the same child before and as early as nine days after treatment showing remarkable uh, improvement. So how do our uh, topical beta blockers work? Um, the skin barrier function in infants is immature. Uh, timolol mali the maliate in the timolol maliate is a lipophilic 
uh, moiety that uh, allows the molecule to enter uh, the cross membranes, enhancing transdermal absorption. Once the tumor reaches the hemangioma, it is within a vascular compartment, which allows then vascular redistribution within the lesion. Timolol pharmacologically speaking is 10 times more potent than propanolol and the doses we use, it is equipotent to the uh, dose of propanolol that is given by mouth. Another important aspect is that the renin angiotensin axis in infancy is upregulated. As you can see here, the renin level is uh, 14 times higher at birth than it is at one year. And beta blockers uh, suppress this axis, which then leads to reduced VEGF production and increased apoptosis. One concern we have with this, of course, is that this is a physiological process and blocking this, could it cause other long-term problems with systemic administration? Uh, we reported the first histology and lecture microscopy of timolol only treated uh, children. And what we found is early evidence of apoptosis as early as one week following treatment, as can be seen on this uh, toluidine blue stain section with nuclear fragmentation or this pycnotic nucleus due to apoptosis. Now, this is, these are the late effects of timoral treatment. On the right side, this is a spontaneously regressed capillary hemangioma. It shows non-organized chaotic um, um, deposition of um, collagen fibers, no, very few or no cellular remnants. Compare this to the timoral treated tissues where there are multiple uh, onion skin-like concentric depositions, waves of depositions of collagen four, um, in addition, it is much more cellular with surviving parasites, in fact. So what we think is happening is that uh, the vasoconstriction causes acute hypoxia in the in treated infantile hemangioma early on, which leads to smooth muscle and endothelial cell damage loss, but relative preservation of parasites, and then to concentric waves of collagen for deposition. We have uh, seen evidence of apoptosis as early as one week following topical timolol treatment. So finally, how is the how the drops applied? It, these are normal um, timolol uh, 0.5 maleate uh, drops from the glaucoma clinic, but the drops must not be um, applied directly to the face of the child. And this is because uh, some of the drops may percolate into one of the nostrils or into the mouth, uh, have systemic absorption and cause systemic side effects, which we don't want. So we apply the drops separately on a clean surface, three drops, two to three times daily. We dip a finger into the, uh, into the solution and then paint the wet finger, uh, use the wet finger to paint the timolol into the skin, uh, overlying the hemangioma in the periocular area. It is thus making it impossible to get uh, the drop into the eye or into the mouth. Um, it is much easier to do this in a sleeping baby, and fortunately, babies sleep a lot at this age. So, in summary, beta blockers uh, have transformed the management of infantile hemangioma. Systemic treatment of propanol is effective but can be associated with potentially serious systemic side effects. Um, it is advised to tell the parents to discontinue propanol during episodes of fasting, restricted oral intake, and respiratory disease for that reason. We have now over 2,000 reported cases of topical timolol since 2010. We know uh, from several large meta-analyses that topical treatment is equally effective for superficial lesions and is in fact safer than oral systemic beta blockade. We don't know whether systemic beta blockade is more efficacious in deeper or orbital lesions to justify the greater risk. We show that even these deeper and orbital infantile hemangiomas can respond to timoral drop alone. We clearly need a multi-center RCT now to compare directly the effectiveness of topical and oral beta blockers for deep periocular and orbital disease. And in the meantime, uh, topical timoral is a reasonable option, especially in infants with uh, contraindications such as asthma or cardiac reasons, or where the parents object to the use of oral propanolol. Finally, I would like to use this opportunity to invite you all to our next 47th annual meeting of the European Pediatric Ophthalmological Society in Munich, 
One of my co-speakers this afternoon, I'm delighted to say, is, um, is uh, Claudia Frieglinger, and she and her colleagues are organizing this event this year in Munich. And I look very much forward to seeing you there. I thank you and the organizers, and I look forward to any questions you may have. Thank you very much.